Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. Jack Nicholas says 90% of a golf swing is in the fundamentals. The fundamentals for me are, remember the old gasp concept, grip, alignment, stance, and posture. If you can get the grip, alignment, stance, and posture right, you're well on your way to a really good golf swing. You can use the same analogy, gasp, in the world of business. The same thing, grip, alignment, stance, and posture. It's the same stuff. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Today, it's all about the fundamentals of golf and business. Our guest today, Jack Sims, knows this very well because he's been successful at both. Founder of two international, very successful creative agencies on two continents. Jack has a 10-question survey for business that translates very well before you head out to the golf course as well. Uh, He also instructs golf one-on-one and has a 21-day method of improving your game at his site, MeasurableResultsGolf.com that can make a dramatic impact on your game, and he guarantees his offer. There's also a couple of tips on specific parts of your game coming up in the conversation. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Jack. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I, I've We've only spoken for a few minutes before we started recording, and I just want to say I want to be you. Well, thank you. <laughs> that, that works well for now, but, you know, let me tell you, it's quite funny. When you get the, the you know, you're talking to friends in, in the middle of winter and you say, you know, oh, I've got a rotten cold, I sound lousy and I feel terrible, and the people at the other end of the phone usually say something to the effect of, yeah, right, uh, when, <laughs> when they find out where, <laughs> where I'm living. So. Right, exactly. So as we speak here on Skype, you are uh, in the, on the island of Turks and Caicos, and you uh, live there uh, as well as travel all over the world doing speaking engagements and um, teach golf and you write and start companies. Um, and if if the audience listens closely, I'm convinced I've already heard waves crashing up against your feet while we speak. You're telling me not true, but don't tell me that. <laughs> it, it, it's not – you're not – Wrong. It's about thirty-five uh, feet away, but uh, it's it's pretty close. So blah that's, uh... blah blah. <laughs> hey, someone's got to do it. You know? Do they really? Does somebody really have to do it? Yes, I do. I do. I gotta do it. Well, that's why I started by saying I wanted to be you. There you go. When I grow up, but yeah. that could be a problem. Okay. I think it's the growing up part of this is the problem. Yeah, well, you know, I, I tell you, it's a funny thing. You should say that, and uh, we're not really talking golf, but I have a thing in my wallet that I put in there, and it's been in there for 30 years, and it says, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Right. I and know. I live by that. Yeah, I've heard that, and um, okay, I'm not going to tell the line, I can't tell it during their show, that I carry with me most of my life. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so I'll paraphrase it. Life is fair, everybody gets screwed. <laughs> That's not the word I would generally use at that point, but you get my point. I <laughs> so let's uh where where do we begin with this because there's so many interesting things to talk about here you are a golf instructor but you're uh well let's ask it this way are you primarily a golf instructor or are you primarily a businessman well these days it's kind of about half and half to be honest with you uh i i i i teach uh, i'm the pro at a club in new york called storm king golf club in new york and i also teach at a driving range up there in the summertime, and I just really enjoy the teaching part. That's my focus. But then, the, and then in the winter time, um, you know, I spend most of my time speaking and writing and stuff like that. And you've started a couple of companies that have become successful. I have. I started a company in the UK initially. Uh, my first company, I uh, started with a buddy of mine, and uh, we decided we, you know, we were so <laughs> young we would. Didn't know any better, and uh, both of all thought we were 10 feet tall or bulletproof, you know. And we started this company in the UK with no clients, virtually no money, and um, that company did quite well. It became consistently one of the top five ranked creative groups in the UK, 
and uh, gave me the, the platform to, to, to you know, springboard to come to the U.S., which I did in 1976. It's interesting. I, you you slip something in there. How important is it for somebody starting a company to to feel like they're ten feet tall and bulletproof? I mean, how I, how important is ignorance going into something that other people with experience would go? What are you doing? I, I think it's huge. I, you know, because I think sometimes we can get like even like in golf, we get paralysis by analysis, and I, you get the passion, the enthusiasm, the excitement that will. Beat anything else you're doing out there. Absolutely will. It, you know, you can have the information, but if you haven't got that drive and the passion to make all that kind of fruition, it's just not going to happen. So I think to me it's essential. Yeah, um, because I started something in my early 30s that um, any – well, even now I look back and I'm going, what was I thinking? But I had success with it, and it, it took me through a couple of decades of work, and um, – put my kids through college basically, but, but it, uh, it was something that if I really had more business, uh, savvy, more, more business acumen at the time, um, would probably have not pursued it, but it was the feeling of, of course I can do this, get out of my way that made right. it work. Well, it is. And there's also, the, it, it, the, you know, it's what, what you don't know, um, is good, uh, because mm-hmm. you just don't know how tough it's going to be. Right. You don't know how difficult it's going to be. And, you know, most companies and most startups never, ever start with enough money. Uh, the biggest lesson you can ever get when you're in a business and starting out is, you know, the, is, is the cash flow lesson. And uh, I found out that the hard way. You know, if I can tell you the story if we've got time. But uh, um, it, it basically, I, I got a call from the bank one day and said, hey, Jack, you know, i got news for you, buddy. You go, you know, we're banking with you right now, and that isn't kind of the business we're in, so you better change that. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, I did, and it, I got into that situation through none of my own doing, but uh, which was a corporation all of a sudden that had, it was a major, major client. Another big problem I made uh, for myself that I allowed the client to get too big with this. And uh, they were dominating our business, and they were paying us 30 days net. And all of a sudden, they got bought out by somebody, a uh, major corporation. And um, they, their accounting people said, hey, well, no, you don't pay 30 days anymore. You pay 120 now. <gasps> and so you can imagine what that did to me. I and- hate when big companies look at the little companies and go, we don't have to pay these guys. They're not that important. Yeah. So, I mean, they really – Crushed. I mean, yeah, happened it, to me as well. It, 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 well, you know, you understand, and it hurt some of our competitors. And I have to tell you, it got so difficult. I pulled all my employees in at one point in time. We, I said, "Listen, guys, we're in serious trouble. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm prepared to go without salary and all that sort of stuff, and because you know we want to make it work, I'm not going to ask any of you to do this. But if you, you know, we got to get through it, so we're going to have to make some compromises here. And everybody, everybody backed me. Uh, they just wanted to work at the company. They loved the place. And we, we got out of the hole. We dug ourselves out of the hole. And uh, I, I'm forever grateful to our employees for helping us do that. They, they were amazing people. Absolutely incredible. Fabulous story. But let's let's relate it back to golf for a moment. Um, as a, a successful businessman, um, what are the elements that are important in, in a round of golf or in a, uh, in a golfer? Um, to bring that work between golf and business, because everyone always talks about you know doing business on the golf course, but also how golf represents so many things in life that are translatable. And how do you see that? Well, you're right, and people do do a lot of business on the golf. I never did. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't even play golf when I was in business, and uh, because I was just too busy working on the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't have time, and I should have done it, but I didn't. Um, but there are so many things. You're absolutely right. I mean, but it starts with anything. If you ask uh, Jack Nicholas, Jack Nicholas says even more than I do. He says ninety percent of a golf swing is in the fundamentals, and I think it's at least, certainly eighty percent. Um, and I usually go with eighty because the eighty twenty rule in most things in life, the Pareto principle, really works, and it does in golf too, as well as it does in business. 
you know so if you the fundamentals for me are you know remember the old gasp concept grip alignment stance and posture if you can get the grip alignment stance and posture right you're well on your way to a really good golf swing and you know it's when people don't get those fundamentals right and it's the same in business you know you got to you can use it you can use the same anal- analysis you know of or analogy of gasp um, to do that, uh, you know, get a grip on your clients, get a, who your customers are, that kind of thing. Are you aligned with the right people? You know, that kind of, you know, sales. You got to talk about sales, man. If, it, if everybody sells something, if you don't, if, and they got to understand they're in the sales business, you know. And your positioning is crucial in the world of business. And you know, the same thing: grip, alignment, stance, and posture. It's the same stuff. I, I'm I'm kind of uh, taken aback right now of the hundreds of interviews that I've done for the Golf Smarter podcast. I don't think I've ever heard anybody refer to GASP. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, I've heard PGA, position what? position grip alignment. Yeah. I've heard that a lot, but I've never heard grip alignment, stance, and posture. That's good. Yeah, GASP. And, uh, and as you say, that, that I use it all the time. And um, it, it's, it's identical in business, the same analogy you can use, you know. And um, it's worked, certainly worked for me, and it certainly works for my, I, I mean, I use it with my students all the time. Fabulous. You know, uh, w- one of the uh, people that we featured on the Golf Smarter podcast is a woman named Jennifer Monroe. Um, she talked about golf and business, and she taught me a really valuable lesson that I've carried uh, when I'm on the golf course. As a matter of fact, even this afternoon, I'm going to be going out and playing. We have a local... Uh, business networking group that is for a minimal amount of money for golf out here. Um, You get nine holes of golf. Uh, The teaching pro comes out on the course and watches you for a couple holes, watches each player and, you know, gives them a couple pieces of advice and then a cocktail afterwards. And we have a networking event. That's why we only play nine holes so that we can have a networking event afterwards. And it's great. And I highly advise anybody to, uh, during summer months, especially because we tee off at three o'clock and we get, you know, we take, take a little long to play the nine holes, but that's okay. We're chatting and we, we have the uh, pro coming out with us. Um, and it's really valuable. But one of the things I was, uh, what I was trying to bring up with Jennifer is the fact that I never do golf. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I never do business on the golf course. I learn whether I want to do business with the person when I'm on the golf course by watching them play. And then if we're going to t- talk about business, we'll do it in the clubhouse afterwards. Well, that, that's a smart move. I, I, I've read a few books on business golf. A friend of mine, uh, Mike Smith wrote one about uh, business and golf. And I've, I've found that, you know, um, it, the golf is a place that the game of golf, if you're playing with clients, as far as I'm concerned, you just got to be a lot of fun and just enjoy it. And don't expect to get anything out of it at all. Uh, and if it can't, business comes from it, that's terrific. Uh, but just enjoy the day. And that, that's, that's the way it's worked for me, certainly in the past. There's very little I've ever played with clients. Yeah. I think a lot of people have a tough time separating the two, um, that when they get out on the golf course, because maybe life gets in the way and you don't get to go on the golf course as much as you'd like, that when you're out there, you're serious about your golf and everything else be damned. You know, everything well, else falls on the wayside. Well, I think you have to, you know, start, start stepping back a little bit and understand that there are no ugly golf courses. Um, we're That's in the, so true. You know, um, we're out there in, in the fresh air with nice people, nice time. Most people who play golf are pretty nice. You always get the jerk uh, in every club, wherever. But by and large, most people who play golf, I've found, are really nice people. They just want to go and have a good time, yeah. you know and usually when you're playing golf, you can't think about much else if you want to play a good game anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we, ju- we usually end the show with six words um, submitted by our listeners in, in various places. Six words on golf, and you just gave me a brand new one that I'm going to use at the end of the show today. There are no ugly golf courses. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, Jack, you've got three different websites that I'm absolutely fascinated about. Um, but let's uh, talk about there's a new one that you're setting up right now um, that is a teaching golf website, right? Indeed. 
And it's yep. me measurableresultsgolf.com. Correct. Please tell Bit me about what, what the uh, motivation on this one is and what's in it for us. Well, I have to tell you that I, after giving, you know, thousands of golf lessons over the years, uh, you find out, you know, that it actually comes down to a few things that, that people could get if they got it right. Um, that that would make a dramatic impact on their game and their enjoyment of the game. And it comes back to something I mentioned earlier, which is the 80-20 rule. And, you know, every time you go to a driving range, you're going to go there and you're going to hear it, the, the, you know, the whack of guys pounding drivers to the back of the uh, the driving range. I mean, you've done, been there and you've seen it, right? Of course. And they, and go, they pull the drive. They bring out two clubs. They bring out the driver and the, and the hybrid or something. I mean, they just bring yeah. out long clubs. You know, and they never, 80% of the game is with the short game for, from 100 yards and in. Mm -hmm. And they, they practice the 80 20 in exactly the wrong uh, order. They do 80% on the driver and maybe, maybe 20, probably 10% on the short game. Mm -hmm. And if I, my, this is about reversing that. I'm trying to reverse people's idea and concept of this is how you get your score down. This is how you become a better golfer. Focus on the area from 100 yards and in. And this, uh, these are drills that, that the drills that are out there that, you know, there's nothing revolutionary, frankly, in any of the drills. You can see it all online in lots of different places. What I've done is put it down together with, so there's drills and tips and, and also a scoring process where you have to practice to get better. And the problem is I can give you, you can go online right now and see all of the drills that all these great people put out there, but people don't practice them. So this is a system where if you get online to measurableresultsgolf.com, it's a system that will make you do the practice if you want to get better because it's a, there's a scorecard for each discipline of putting, chipping, and pitching, and you score yourself through 21 days. Now, it can be over a month, two months, three months, whatever. But the idea is you've got to get a, a total of 500 points, and that all means you've got to practice a lot to get 500 points. And the deal is this. If you don't see improvement in your game, we're going to send you your money back. But you, it's, and as I said, most people are nice people who play golf. So we're, 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 we're going with the idea that if you don't uh, do the work, you're going to fess up and say, okay, I didn't do the work. And it's, it's on, the, on the idea is that most people will be truthful. They're going to tell the truth and they're going to try and do the work if they can. And so if you go to Measurable Results Golf, you can see it all explained on the first page. Sign up. Give it a try. And if you don't improve your game in 21 days over, say, over a month, two months, three months, uh, we will send you your money back. It's as simple as that. And this is a guy who started numerous, numerous businesses. So if he's offering to give your money back, he's pretty confident in what he's doing. <laughs> That's I, I know. I've done it. We've, we've done this with lots and lots of people. We've gone through the 21-day program. They've all improved. Hmm. It's that simple. We know they're going to improve. Well, I think that you've hit on something uh, very deep inside of all of us by giving us the scorecard, the concept of having to compete with yourself, and that's all we're doing, golf, right? What is golf? Golf is you, you yep. compete against yourself, and you can never win. That's why we keep coming back, right? And that's why Nike came up with the line. There is no finish line. There you yeah. go. So with the idea of having a scorecard – you, yes. you see pr improvement. You see measurable results. Oh, my God. I just fell into it. It is measurable results, huh? <laughs> you, you got, got it. me. <laughs> <laughs> so what is like you, – you talk about there's tips on here. Yes. What is it's your number one tip? What is the most important tip? What is the one that you see over and over? And, and obviously the 80-20 on, on the, dr the driving range. But which tip do you find that you're giving to more uh, in students than most? The, uh, you know, there's obviously lots of uh, horses for courses, but I will tell you, uh, for most golfers that I've taught through the years, it's getting in the right position at the top of the swing. From there, if I can get my students to get in the right position at the top of the swing, we, we, you know, from there it's a lot, lot easier. And that's where most people fall down. It's they they'll come too far on the inside. They give it too vertical. They have a club shot closed, whatever uh, open. And it's if you got in that bad position at the top of the swing, it's very hard to recover from that. There are exceptions, you know, the Furyx and the, of this world. But uh, by and large, if you don't get in the right position at the top, 
And I'll give you the second one too, because I think this is. But don't don't get there yet. Hold that thought, because oh. I want to pursue that. Okay. Um, because you brought up Furyk, and so here's somebody who has a unique swing, Absolutely. and if somebody messed with him, it would throw everything off. Correct. Everybody has a unique swing. There is no perfect swing. I got to believe that every single person, because mostly because of physical limitations um, and phys- physical structure, nobody has the exact same swing. So why is it that instructors are so insistent on making sure that we do the exact same thing? Well, I don't think, I, you know, I, I don't. I mean, I, I try to treat uh, my students, in, you know, if somebody's five foot three and weighs 250 pounds. The, they're the not going to be on the golf course. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say, all right, 200 pounds. Um, they're going to have a, a slightly flatter swing than the guy who's six foot one. Right. You know, I mean, it's going to happen. So you, you can't, what I, what I'm, but well, you have to work on the swing that's right for them. But at the end, which, you know, actually there's three things that I want to get back. And I'm going to, if you, the bottom line is, it doesn't matter if Jim Furyk loops it around or Lee Trevino sliced across it, whatever he did. At the moment of truth, at the impact, right. that club face is square. So and now, so now we're at the, now we're at the moment of contact versus the top of the swing. That's right. So there's two places that you really, you know, I would even sacrifice a little bit to make sure we got a, a club face square at the moment of truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? So, and the other thing that I think that uh, if I was going to really, really push people hard to improve their game, you know, is instead of really going out and starting hitting, trying to hit the ball hard, Try to understand, and this is the again, as it, from the teacher's point of view, I see people flipping their wrists so much. Mm-hmm. What I, I, I want to just, you know, try to for, for, for right hand is to keep that left hand, that rest, left wrist forward, keep hands ahead of the club, uh, club head. Um, that's where most people go wrong is getting, you know, get letting the club head get ahead of the hands. And once that happens, it's all bad news from there. But when your hands are in front of uh, in front of the club head, and you're talking about at contact, correct? Yes. Okay. So isn't that where the tendency to flip the wrists would be? Is now that you're out there like that, weren't you going to yes. flip it? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where where it happens. Absolutely. And I'm saying you got to through the through the swing. We got to make sure that we keep. Uh, you know, keep our body and our, and our hands moving forward so that we can rotate through the swing. Oh, I see what you're saying. And well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, when you talk about making sure now if you were going to break it down, it's like, oh, it's really important to be, the, you know, the top of the, where you are at the top of the backswing. Well, wait a minute. It's even more important to be where you are at, at the moment of contact, which I think is really the most important is, is having the club, head, club face square at contact. And I, I know there are times that maybe uh, I'll hit the ground before I hit the ball, especially with a driver. That the, you know, and you'll hit the ground and then you'll hit the ball versus what you're supposed to do on most shots. Um, mm-hmm. But that kind of like straightens out my club head a little bit. And <laughs> you have, you, your ball doesn't go that far, but boy, it's, it's beautifully straight when you do that sometimes. Well, you're correct. And also, by the way, when you're practicing on mats uh, at a driving range, there's a game against practicing on grass, it will do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So mats really can work against you because you can get a self, uh, a, a, a uh, false sense of, of security. Well, uh, absolutely you can. And it, it's, you know, uh, but that they, uh, certainly your local uh, golf pro can help you fix that, hopefully. There is a big transition going from a mat driving range to a grass driving range. Is that right? Well, I, I have to tell you, I, you know, there's nothing like it. I, I've seen a dramatic increase, for me anyway, in playing lessons these days. People want to get out and actually have tuition on the course far more. Uh, these, I'm, you know, the shift is getting bigger uh, from that and the, it's doing a full swing um, lessons on the range. Do you find that to uh, be more valuable to the student? Very much so. Yeah, I yeah. would think so. Very much so. And, and as an the, instructor, you probably can charge more. I mean, it's better for you as well. Well, we're not only charge more, it's a longer period of time, but it right. gives me an amount of time to see students in different circumstances. Now, here's the big thing that I do, and I don't know if other, student, uh, other teachers do this, but something that I do, and I do it with all my students, 
is uh, I give homework. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, if you go to my uh, – I forgot about that. There's another website, Jack Sims Golf, where, you, where I book <laughs> lessons, where you can book lessons. My students – I have an online program where people can go and book lessons to, to have me uh, teach them. And it says, you know, me, they can, then they can fit it in whenever they want. Anyway, um, on that, on that website, you know, you know, the, the, the idea is that, 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 that people can, um, go in and book the time and, and fix it fairly easily for themselves. But then more importantly is this, when we get out there on the course and I have a time with them, I, I give them this, uh, after we finish, I give them a lesson. I say, Hey, you got to do the homework now. And there's a place on there they can send me an email, write to me, and say, this is what we learned in the lesson. And what I do then, I go back, I check everything, and make sure they understand what I taught them. It's always one of the greatest things about teaching people is if they can't write it down, they haven't learned it. So I make sure that my students learn exactly what I told them. And I cannot tell you how many times I get uh, an email from one of my players. Hey, I just played in the club championships. We, I was really lost. So I pulled out and I keep the notes in my bag and it really helped. You know? And so those things are really, really helpful. And I do it especially with my junior kids. I've got eight, nine and 10 year olds that I do it with. And I make sure every, they write, write down, they have to do their homework. Tell me a little bit about how to seriously win at business and golf. It's uh, a book that I wrote uh, that is based on the concept of the great leaders in business have a certain way of doing things. There's an attitude. Uh, there's a knowledge base. There's uh, a passion, a drive, a, a will to win that most people, business leaders have to have and if I just substitute business leader for golfers it's exactly the same you know you can say the same stuff and having been one of those people who have been in both worlds of the professional golf teacher and as a professional businessman if you like I've been privileged to you know experience both worlds so I was able to put this concept down and create it into a book and at the moment actually we're looking at getting um sponsored by one of the major companies to uh, to to put it out under their name so it's what it's written and produced and finished but it's actually not published yet so it, it's it's there it's done but we're waiting for us uh, literally waiting for a sponsor so if there's any sponsors out there uh you can't want- have them they're mine <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know i it, yeah, you can't know <laughs> any sponsors. You got to come to Golf Smarter first, <laughs> of course. Absolutely, you got to. You can I, get now, sloppy it, seconds, pal. <laughs> now, listen, what I'm telling you, this no, we're actually in negotiations with somebody fairly large, right? And uh, it's on the on the uh, tied into the PGA Tour. who are looking to sponsor the book. So. Oh, that would be great! Congratulations. I hope it comes through. Thank you. And so let's see. Uh, we, we've done Jack Sims Golf. We've done Measurable Results uh, Golf dot yep. com. Uh, jacksimsbusinessgolf.com and jacksims.com. Yes, sir. a lot of Jack Sims in there. Yeah, there's a lot of Jack Sims going on. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I'm, you know it, it, uh, my, my father always used to say, there's no point in getting older if you can't get a little bit smarter or a little bit cra- craftier. And I, I, I think the youngsters have taught me, you know, this whole social networking thing is just, it just blows my mind. And, you know, you've got to be in it to win it, right? Yeah, and I'm sure it's uh, it's changed the way you do business. Everybody, it's everybody's changed the way they do business now because well, of it. the fact that I can sit here in the Turks and Caicos Islands, do this interview, um, and still be in contact and do all the things I need to do, uh, it's quite amazing. I'm, I'm actually building, rebuilding one of my websites, my Jack Sims website right now. I'm dealing with a, 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 a programmer in Armenia. A copywriter in England, a videographer in New York. I mean, it's quite amazing how you can put these things together. It just blows my mind. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right, give us a tip. Give us another tip, and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up. I'm, I love the golf tips. Okay, well, as uh, far as I'm concerned, here's one of the best things. If you analyze a golf round of golf that you play, you're going to find out the biggest percentage 
of shots you take are with that one little short club, the putter. And we don't spend enough time putting. So here's the drill. Well, I'll give you two drills. The first drill is, is I like to see people play their putter. And I won't tell you how to stand, how to grip it. You do whatever you want. But I do like to see you slightly inside the line where, where if you put a drop a ball from your eye to the ground and you're going to see where it falls, I want you to play slightly inside like that line, A. B, I like to see people play the ball slightly towards the forward foot. And the reason I do that is I like to have the putting stroke hit the ball slightly on the upswing. I've found over the years that this creates slight top spin to the ball. It stops it, the ball jumping in the air and enables you to get the ball on the ground quicker and hold the line longer. Okay? I like so that's, it. that's the first tip. The second tip is Bobby Locke. I mean, you know, I've heard of Bobby Locke, the great South African golfer, mm-hmm. many years ago. Probably was one of the greatest putters ever. Uh, most people have never heard of him, but he's a great, great putter. Um, and he putted with a shorter backswing and longer follow through. And I believe that's the best putting stroke you can have. Most people decelerate through the putting stroke. Mm-hmm. And I, I like to see it promoted so you can get a longer putting stroke. So the way to do that is put a couple of uh, tees in the ground, let's say two feet apart. And if you imagine putting your club down two thirds of the way back, and then bring the club back to the back tee, tee and then hit forward to the front tee. And that kind of gives you that feeling, one-third backswing, two-thirds forward swing in, in, in your stroke. And that will help you. That coupled with putting the ball slightly forward in your stance to get more top spin, and it will hold the line, and you'll accelerate through the ball. Awesome. Great stuff. Thank you so much. A pleasure. So, again, uh, the websites are MeasurableResultsGolf.com with a money-back guarantee. Definitely got to check that one out. And I will put the links uh, in the blog and in your show notes. So if you don't have a chance to write these down or memorize them, please check your show notes or come to GolfSmarter.com and look it up. And uh, we'll have those all linked right to his site. So, again, MeasurableResultsGolf.com, JackSimsBusinessGolf.com, jacksimsgolf.com jacksims.com and give Jack's dad a call and say your son is doing just fine you're a gentleman and a scholar (laughs) thank you very much for coming on to the Golf Smarter Podcast and giving us tips, giving us six words giving us a book recommendation you my friend are a wealth of information well, and, and you know, thanks for having me. I mean, I really, really, this has been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate it. And you know, anytime I can help, please feel free to call. All right. So when you get that sponsor, send them my way. <laughs> you got it. And, I, and it, you like them with a big K. If you can work that one out, is you know, big K. <laughs> There's not many major corporations start with the letter K in in, in involving golf. Mm-mm. Figure no. it out. Okay, fine. (laughs) Thank you, Jack. Hey, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.